I'm going to talk about Qfield Cloud today. Um, what I'd like to do is show you with a lot of slides in a fast pace, basically what your full workshop with, uh, workshop, <laughs> workflow with uh, Qfield Cloud could be. Um, for the ones that do not know Qfield Cloud um, or Qfield, Qfield is an app to, to digitize data on the field. I'm just waiting for the slides to appear. So. Um, Qfield um, is, is an app to digitize data on the field. There you go. And um, <coughs> we obviously thought that uh, at a certain point, people want to get their data easily from the field back to the, um, to the office. Why? Did we do that because Qfield is basically taking over the world? As I mentioned in the keynote yesterday, we are at almost uh, 850,000 downloads. We're doing 20,000 more downloads per month. So it's, it's a huge user base growing. And um, we actually put a demo project in Qfield where you can digitize yourself and tell us where you are. Um, that's what comes out of it, um, basically everywhere. Um, we are now at version 4. Point, um, sorry, 3. I'll get there. 2.8.3, um, and this morning probably you saw the presentation by Matthias with all the new features. If not, come by to our booth. We can show you a live demo of what we have there. The idea of Qfield is that it needs to be there for you when you're online, when you're offline in bad situations and uh, when you have teams and roles and conflicts. And this part specifically is what Qfield Cloud solves for you. So with Qfield itself, you can do very well um, online or offline. You cannot do hybrid, you have to decide. Um, you cannot really do teams. Uh, you, it, it works very well as a field collection app. But if you really are starting using um, Teams and, and, and those features here, Qfield Cloud is really going to enhance the way that, that your, workflow, uh, your workflow goes. It is obviously, uh, since we, we believe heavily in open source, it's a truly open source solution. We've been uh, pushing out all the, all the code of Qfield Cloud as well on our repositories. So if you want to take it yourself, uh, host it on your own uh, on your own services. Uh, go ahead. So, obviously, you log in first. That's the first thing that you'll do. Um, and when you're there, you get to see your projects. Uh, Qfield Cloud is as a concept of uh, of organizations, of teams, of users, and of project. Every project has um, an or as an owner, which could be a user or an organization. Um, organizations creation. It's, uh, it's super easy. Every user can create as many organizations as they want. They are mainly um, data management and billing constructs. So you will have your company as an organization and then add users to it. Um, every member of the organization can be either um, just a simple member or an administrator. And then the permissions that it will get is really based on the project that we'll see further on. Uh, we can build teams because we know that Sometimes you have uh, the team east that only needs to go to certain projects, the team uh, south that needs to go to other projects, so you can really manage um, your users easily and adding them to teams and then add the teams to the project so you don't have to repeat all the time the same seven people to a certain project. In the project overview, we get to see who is involved, um, how many files this project has, how many changes the project had, and um, when we go into more details, we can go and have a look at what files are part of a project. So there is always a QGIS file, obviously, which is what gives you the styling, the, the um, labeling, and, and printing, and layouting, and everything. Then uh, you will have um, data, possibly, <laughs> um, geopackages, geo ideally, or PostGIS connections. Uh, in which case you wouldn't see them here, and then attachments like pictures that you're taking on the field. Um, in the project itself, I'll see also all the changes that happen. So I have a, a track, a follow-up of uh, what my users on the field have been doing. Here, for example, 
I see that Linda has been heavily working um, last uh, summer when we, when we prepared everything. Um, and we see that uh, she did some changes and the changes were automatically applied. If I then um, go further to the collaborators, I'll see um, that I don't have Linda here. You saw that she was working. That is because Linda is part of the Ninjas and she is an editor. You see here we have different permissions. and This is a really key part. Uh, we have five levels of permissions that you can give to users or to teams. Um, where the lowest one is reader. Those are people that can look at your project but cannot change your data. They can just have a look and that's it. The next level we have is the reporter, which we have for the demo users. Reporter can only create new data. They cannot go and delete existing things. They can just create new points, new lines, new polygons. And then the next one we have is the editor, which can do everything with the data, but cannot go and change uh, settings and the QGIS project itself. And we have manager, which does almost everything, and admin that can kill the project and you know those kind of things. But I think that uh, really interesting one, the reporter, which you can just give to an external contractor maybe to go and create data, may, being sure that your own data is not being touched and, and, do, and done anything with it. And the interesting part is that because we know in QField itself the role that the person has, we can change the user interface. We're not going to show a plus button to add a point to um, Lucy, which is only a reader. We are just going to show her the, the map and the possibility to click on it. So that's really something that, um, that we push a lot so that the user interface becomes even easier. Um, when things are done, we have jobs that happen. A job is something that QField Cloud will do for you. Whenever data are pushed, um, they are integrated, and the result of a job is a new version of your data set or of your old project if you're doing something from QGIS itself. We can set up secrets, which is how we are working with PostGIS directly. You can set up a PG service, and uh, whenever a job is running to integrate data, it will, instead of create a new GeoPackage version, it will push the result back to a PostGIS database using the credential that you're giving through the, um, to the PG services. And, um, this is something extremely powerful because you can have your own integration database where you are having all your people pushing data, do your quality assurance on the integration database, and then push it over to your production database. The yeah, PG service, you can define all the, all the things that you need for PG services. And uh, once you, you set up everything, you know who's working on the project, you have your team, you have your collaborators, you have um, everybody on board, um, you can start working. This is usually what I just showed before, a work that one person does in the office is not something that, that you're doing very often. It's something that you do at the beginning of a project. And then you go to QGIS, you install um, the QField Sync pro uh, plugin, and you can log in there as well. And once you log in, you'll see all the projects that you're a member of. You can start in, um, you can download it, you'll see it downloads all your G packages, all your images, all the, geo, the QGIS project, obviously, and it opens your project automatically. Uh, you can do some changes in QGIS, you can change symbology, you can change data, um, any, any kind of things. And um, when you push again, you'll see that not everything is pushed before. We had like six or seven files, now we're pushing only two new files. So um, just smart enough to, to decide whatever needs to be pushed um, and, and to give you the possibility to synchronize. On the other hand, if meanwhile somebody changed the data on the field and pushed and there was a job that ran on the cloud, you see that um, we have um, the possibility here to download the geo package and upload the, the QGIS project. In the end, we will have merged both, we will have on the cloud the newest QGIS project and the newest geo package, which is the, the new state of the project. Um, this is one way to go. So when you're creating a new project, uh, when, cre when you're using an existing project, if you are on the other end, um, 
never used Qfield Cloud before, you have your QGIS project, um, and you have optimized it for mobile, so please do not use one-to-one -one the projects that you have for your office. <laughs> Field work is different than office work. It's cold or super hot, windy or super sunny. Um, it's not like sit. It's not like sitting in your office on a nice, comfortable chair. So do projects that are made for your users on the field. And in this case, when you've done that, you convert it. Um, you can just click on create a new project. It will show you a mask where you can convert. It will make a copy of it because we do not want to touch your original things. We'll make a copy of it if you choose the first recommended variant. If you choose the second one, it will use the one that you tell him to use. So it's kind of the advanced version. After that, you give it a name, tell it where it is, push it, and it's up there. It opens automatically the one in the background, and, um, and that's it. At, um, at a more detailed level, so layer level, you can choose actually what happens to the layers when you're pushing them. Um, there might be layers that you don't care about in mobile, so you can say uh, ignore them. I don't have an example here. Um, there are some layers that you want to directly access because they are WMTS given by your national infrastructure and you don't want to dump the whole thing in your phone. You just say use the WMTS directly. And then we have the offline editing ones, which are the ones that we are actually going to be working on. Um, same here, upload changes, and then it's time to go back to work on the field. Here we will uh, basically see the same thing. We have all the... Um, all our projects that are there, we'll see which one are available on the cloud, missing locally or available locally already. When we click on it, there is a packaging job happening and we can download it. And once um, we have downloaded, you see the exact same project just with our optimized user interface in Qfield where you can start working. Here you can edit <clears throat> Sorry, you can edit attributes, you can add pictures, you can create new points, and so on and so on. You do all your work that you need to do, and once you're done, you'll see up at the top of the little cloud shows you how many changes you have, how many um, changes have been tracked, and you'll have the possibility to push those up uh, to, to the cloud. And once you push them, says that there are no local changes anymore. You can obviously also revert those. And um, once we're done, we're up to date. We go back to the cloud and we'll see that we have um, a new uh, project change. So we have a new point that has been added we, or a new attribute that has been changed. And here we have actually uh, a super nice interface that shows us what kind of change has been done. So here we see down on the value that the diameter was changed from 4.1 to 4.2. Really neat. We'll see we have the possibility of showing all the attribute, not only the ones that are changed. By default, we show only the changes because that's the interesting part. Or we can go even further and have a look at the raw JSON that was sent to, to the application. Why do I mention this? Well, because um, Qfield Cloud is completely API driven, which means you can just hook to the API and get that JSON and do whatever you want with it. You can get all the picture via API, you can get all the changes, all the job, anything that you can do with the website, you can do via API. In fact, the website is a separate application that speaks via API to Qfield Cloud. So it's, uh, it's really anything that you can do with the mouse, you can do with your APIs as well. We see here that the changes are automatically applied and um, that there is a new version available. The date now changed um, and I have um, new, new data. I still have the overview and everything. And now um, I can see also that my change that I did in QGIS before was about renaming uh, three and here I have custom picture naming, you see that before they were just called JPEG, and now I, I changed in Qfield Sync some settings so that the custom naming now reflects the layer that generated that picture. So here, trees prefix is actually the layer name trees. 
And here you can use any QGIS expression to do your naming of your pictures. So pretty, pretty powerful. We see back in the office, now it tells us, well, you have some changes online. Only geopackages changes, obviously. And once we pull those down, you see that suddenly the tree here turned from green to red, meaning that it needs work. If I push a conflict, which we try to avoid, obviously, but conflicts will happen. The best way to deal with conflicts is try to avoid them, so send people to different places if you can. That's the easiest way to, to manage conflict. Um, if I push a conflict, um, we'll see that um, the job that runs does not automatically apply. I can say here there is a setting that is called override conflicts, and it will always apply the last coming thing, so last come, last wins. Uh, but it's not on by default. By default, if there is a conflict, you'll get the situation where the job doesn't run, it says conflict, and then you can go on the job and you can say, well, I want to apply it, I want to ignore it, I want to skip the whole thing together. If I say um, ignore, it just stays there. I still can see what would have been, but it's not been applied to my new geo package. And if I decide to apply it, you see that it gets applied. I get a new version of the geo package, as I showed before. If by some random situation I do merge a conflict that I didn't want or I delete things that I didn't want to delete, uh, we keep history for each file that you have. You can go and get history back. There is a limit, obviously, on the, on the amount of history that you're getting. But uh, you can go there and you can see the version with the date, and then you can just download it, um, reopen it in QGIS, and then um, re-push it up as a, as the newest version. You're just basically overwriting the new version with an old version. So it's really powerful there. I mentioned earlier that um, Qfield Cloud is, is um, API-based. We have a very nice documentation of all, the, um, of all the API calls that we have. But we also have a Python SDK and a command line interface that you can use to build your own tools and to interact with, um, with um, the cloud. We do offer Qfield Cloud as a service at uh, qfield.cloud. Uh, it's a paid service. Well, it, not only there is also a free part of it, or you can obviously roll it out in your own cloud. We can help you with that um, if you need, or you can just take the code and roll it out yourself. The version that we host, it's hosted in Switzerland. In Switzerland, we have the luck to have very high percentage of very good energy. So it's really easy to get data centers that are actually using sustainable energy. And by kind of the geomorphology of Switzerland, there's a lot of rock around. So data centers tend to be very solid. Um, pricing, we have a community um, feature, a community plan which has um, unlimited uh, public and private pre um, projects. Basically, it's limited um, to, the, um, to a small data storage. And then we have a pro uh, version that uh, has more storage and also offers the possibility to have offline post-GIS. And then we have an organization that um, has a base price per user. The important thing here to understand is that we are invoicing only users that you're actually using. So if you have 20 users in your organization, but you live in Finland or Iceland, and you do not want to really do any field work in February, well, you're not going to be paying in February for 20 users. You're just going to be paid the base price. Um, and then if in August everybody is working, you're going to be paying for 20 users. So we want really to make it easy for you to have accounts, but not, not be invoiced for things that you're not actually using. It's obviously, as I said, uh, customizable. You can do white labeling because it's all open source. We can do it for you. You can do it for yourself if you want. What's next? Um, plenty of ideas that we have, obviously, and that is why they are not written. Um, looking into um, area management, so permissions at a 
kind of geofencing way, uh, publishing of data on WebGIS, uh, creation of tasks management, so plenty of ideas that we have in the back of our head, but we do not want to, to write them there because they are ideas that we are working on. Um, we went live out of beta in uh, February, end of February, so it's been three months now of heavily usage. Uh, we have already, we have something like 40,000 users on it currently, so we focus really on getting the service to, to be running smoothly now. If you have any questions, as I said, I have a, or we have a boot back there, come by, we are the one with the pole that has little lights on top. Um, and if not, um, qfield.cloud is where you get all the information, and obviously, um, we can get in touch with me as well at market.opengs.ch. Thanks.